Hello everyone, welcome back to Stewart Technologies. In the last video, I worked on the control electronics and did the first full system test with all of the sensors. The test was mostly a success. There were only a handful of things that needed to be fixed before I could move on. First up was the joint encoders. For running all of the motors and sensors together simultaneously, the noise from the stepper motors caused the I2C interface to freeze. As I previously mentioned, switching out the wires with shielded cable instead should fix that problem. So let's give it a try. First I'll need to disassemble the entire robot to remove all the sensors. Switching out the wires is super easy, all it takes is some time and patience. Since this cable is shielded, we'll need to terminate one end of the shielding to ground. Tying this into the ground for the encoder on the control board should do the trick. With the new cables in place, I tried the same code as before to see if the sensors freeze again. And voila! No more noise interruption for the I2C sensors. As you can see, I'm able to move all of the joints, including the upper joints that previously failed, without the I2C connection being interrupted. That's one huge problem solved. Now I can tackle the next issue, the loose belts. During almost every movement test I've done for joints 2 and 3, there's been an issue with the timing belts. The weight of the arm causes the joint to slip during movement, mainly when the arm is moving from a mostly vertical position to a horizontal one. At first, I thought it may have been the tension of the belts, so I adjusted the idler bearings for both joints to increase the belt tension. Unfortunately, this did nothing and the problem persisted. After doing some research and examining the robot a bit closer, I noticed the problem wasn't actually with the belts, but with the pulleys instead. The set screws on most of the pulleys were loose due to the large forces put on them during movement. To remedy this, all I needed to do was apply some Loctite to each of the set screws and let it cure overnight. Unfortunately, this meant I had to disassemble the robot yet again. If you made it this far in the video, I just want to say thanks for all the support you've shown me. This year, I hope to put out more videos than usual and tackle more ambitious and interesting projects. If you'd like to help me with that goal, you should consider supporting me through Patreon. By becoming a Patreon member, you gain early access to my videos, access to behind the scenes posts, and even access to certain project files. In fact, the files from this video and the previous one are already available to level two and higher members on Patreon. Your support goes a long way in helping me pursue my passion more actively and most importantly, making content for you. So thank you. The link to my Patreon can be found in the description below. Once the robot was reassembled, all of the joints seemed to be working as intended. No more slipping. Let's hope this is the last time I need to disassemble this thing. With another thing off the list, we now move on to the next issue, software. The software I've been using to test everything up until this point is a hot mess. There are multiple sketches, loads of unused variables, and a ton of unnecessary lines of code. So to fix this, I sat down for a couple of hours and reworked everything into a single Arduino sketch. This won't be the final version by any means, but it'll definitely help speed up the rest of the development from here on out. So after spending a couple hours refactoring the code and combining everything from the different sketches into one sketch, I've come up with some basic control software that allows me to control all five joints by just typing the angles into the serial monitor for the team scene. So before we go over how the code works, I just want to give you a quick demonstration. So let's re-upload this sketch. There's no easy reset button, so I have to re-upload to reset. So right now we're setting up each of the encoders for the joints. Then we'll set up the stepper motors and begin homing. As you can see on the camera right now, J1 is homing first. It'll click the end stop, 
back off a bit and then proceed to do the same thing for the other joints. Once that's finished, it'll then move to the zero position for the robot. And the zero position is basically the position I designed the robot in during CAD. It was actually the position you saw the robot in right before I started homing. And now it moves to the zero position. You can see in the serial monitor the starting angles over here at the very top. And we're slowly moving until everything's at zero. So there. Now that the robot's at zero, I can tell it to move the joints to any angle I want within the specified range. So let's say I want to move J1 to 90 degrees. I just type 90 for the first angle and then set everything else to zero and hit enter. And you can see down here, it prints out the new angles and then it goes ahead and moves the robot to that position. So before we go over the rest of the code, let's just move to a bunch of different angles and it'll give you an idea for how the robot functions. So as you can see, I can type in any combination of angles for the five joints and it'll move those joints accordingly. So just to give you a brief overview through the code, uh, most of the things are the same from last time. We have the definitions for all of the pins. We have the configurations for the joints, like the ratios and the steps per revolution. Something new I added was the min and max angle. This just defines the range of motion for each joint. We have angle offsets for all of the joints. These are to help with calibration to make sure the zero point of the robot is actually the zero point that we expect. And going back up here, we have definitions for closed loop control. The joints that are closed loop all have encoders. J4 and J6 don't have encoders, so you just set them to zero. And that basically just tells the code that you'll be running an open loop control where you'll be using the position of the stepper motor based on the number of steps we move so far to produce an angle value rather than reading it from an encoder. So the setup, it basically sets up all of the pin modes for everything, uh, sets up the encoders, initializes the stepper motor, setting the correct speed, acceleration, pulse width, and then we home each of the joints sequentially. Joint six isn't being homed right now because there's no end stop or encoder for it. Once each joint is homed, we're going to assume that one, they're not clicking the end stops because after homing, we back off from the end stops a little bit, but also that during runtime, we should not be hitting any of the end stops. If we hit an end stop, that means something went wrong and we need to halt the robot in its tracks. So basically we just attach interrupts to each of the end stops. And when that interrupt is hit or triggered rather, these functions down here, will set the error code to one print out which end stop was triggered, and then the main loop will halt its runtime with the while loop. So going back to the setup, once everything's homed and the interrupts are attached, we just set each joint to the zero position at angle zero for all the joints. And the main loop basically waits for an input from the serial monitor, updates the target joint angles, and runs each joint until we reach those angles. So this chunk of code here is just reading from the serial monitor, constraining the joint angles it receives, and setting the target joints accordingly. The next if statement is just to print out the current angle of the robot to the serial monitor, as you see right here. It just gets the current angle, prints it out every, I believe, two seconds I have it set to. So what we have here is the main portion of the code that controls each of the joints. The get current angle function will either use the encoder values to set the current angle or it'll take the stepper count from the stepper motor and do some math to calculate the angle. And then the update joint functions use that angle 
to make sure that we're reaching the appropriate target. And like I said before, if an interrupt is triggered, it'll set the error flag to one. And if that happens, we'll just detach all of the interrupts and then just wait, have the robot stop. This code is very bare bones. You just type in angles and the robot will move to those angles, but it has no regard for itself in space and it, there are no inverse kinematics involved. So it's entirely possible to put in a combination of angles that makes the robot crash into itself and it wouldn't be able to stop itself from doing that. I could fix this in the sketch and add in a bunch of limits to say don't go outside of this range, but I think I'm going to try and save that for the more PC side of things rather than putting that on the Team T. And hopefully that'll happen when I integrate the robot with Ross, or at least I'm planning to integrate it with Ross. We'll see how that goes. That's basically all I have to show you for now. In the next video, hopefully there'll be some more updates and progress made on the software, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out and I have complete control of every angle in the robot. So we're moving in the right direction. With the mechanical design working as intended and some basic control software implemented, I could start shifting my focus to other things like wire management, inverse kinematics, and the end effector. In the next video, I'll hopefully tackle all or part of that depending on how things work out. So stay tuned. Also, shameless plug for my Instagram. I've started posting updates about projects there, so make sure you follow me so you don't miss key updates or content regarding this project and others. If you have any questions or comments about the project so far, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, share with a friend. And make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.